Hello, my name is François Guillaume Rivaud. I'm the founder of Redsmin. I was not able to be there at Redisconf this year, but I still wanted to share with you some insight about Redis usage and ecosystem using the large monitoring data sets that we have at Redsmin. So, what is Redsmin? Redsmin is an online service for administrating and monitoring Redis servers. It provides a data editor, key batch operations, alerting features, real-time data visualization, and much more. We built Redsmin from the ground up to be safe to use in production. At the time of this talk, we are currently monitoring Redis servers from 10,000 developers and companies around the globe. So, last thing you need to know about Redsmin is how we connect Redis servers to it. Because Redsmin is an online service, it supports and recommends communication with Redis through a secure TLS connection. So there are two ways to connect your Redis servers to Redsmin. Option A, your Redis is publicly available. Anyone can access it from the internet, and we can start a direct connection from Redsmin. Then option B is when things are a little more advanced. Maybe your Redis server is inside the private network or started from your laptop. In that case, you simply need to set up Redsmin proxy and it will start a secure TLS encrypted connection from your local network to Redsmin. Now that you understand what is Redsmin and how we manage Redis servers, let's talk about Redis ecosystem. The first thing I looked at while preparing this talk was Redis version distribution. I discovered that 2.8 was still largely used, tightly followed by 3.0. The overall Redis uptime on production system was an interesting discovery. Redis has always been well known for its reliability, and the data we gather confirms it. As you can see, there may be a correlation between the two. At least, that's the conclusion we had, looking from other dimensions. Next up, Redis security. Security starts with how we connect to Redis. We found that only 8% of the publicly available Redis server were connected to us using a TLS connection, thanks to Microsoft Azure Redis Cache and Redis Labs that provide such feature. Next up was of course Redis authentication. The result are still quite alarming. Only 30% had authentication configured. So remember, we only talk here about publicly available Redis servers. Hopefully, 3.2 introduces Redis protected mode that will restrict users from exposing their Redis server to the internet. Anyway, you may wonder, in this big dataset, did we found any slow command patterns? The easiest way to gather slow commands on a production Redis server is to leverage the slow log. But then, the slow log must be activated. Only two-thirds of the servers in our dataset had the slow log enabled. Surprisingly, we also discovered that 9% of servers had the famous keys command in their slow log. Other slow commands were most of the time long variadic and synchronous commands. But performance is one thing, memory usage another. When you look at Redis.io documentation about memory optimization, you can learn that 32-bit Redis use a lot less memory per key, but are limited to 4 GB of memory. At Redsmin, 99% of the Redis servers we manage are 64-bit, so we looked at the memory usage and discovered that 97% of them were using less than 4 GB of memory. Definitely a huge loss of memory per server. Anyway, just like this space, memory is also a finite, limited, server resource. Looking at our dataset, we found that 91% of the Redis servers were not configured using a max memory value. We can stop wondering why Redis does not warn users at startup time when max memory is not set. And if max memory is set, for values lower than 4 GB with an architecture of 64 bit, why not recommend the use of 32 bit Redis instead of 64? It would be a great suggestion for users. So, thanks for listening. Don't hesitate to give a try to Redsmin and don't forget to subscribe to Redis Weekly, our weekly newsletter about Redis ecosystem. Thanks you guys!